made little progress the last couple rainy hot days I was inside and, um, finally my rails came I um, wound up buying these linear rails on eBay I couldn't believe I found the set of the two of them shipped for $25 so um, I figured what the heck I'd take a chance on them I you know everybody else wanted a lot more and it turned out they really were very nice rails uh, very nice tight no shake uh, move smoothly and I started my sketch of what I'm going to be doing and you know that's kind of just the napkin type sketches that I use I don't really get too involved anymore and the first thing I've got to do is start cutting down some of this extrusion that I have left over here um, now if I had a couple nice pieces of angle iron it would have been a much easier job but this is all I had to work with today so this is what I'm doing and what I did is I just took my saw and I put on that old uh, Freud uh, 40 tooth combination blade that's no good for wood and it turned out it cuts aluminum pretty nice you can see it you know did a nice cutting job and uh, actually it doesn't even throw much of the chips above the table it kind of throws them all down in the dust collector so you know I found I found a good use for that blade I didn't want to cut this with my good amount of blade so um, you know I swapped it out and it turned out good the so first thing I'm gonna do is just cut this extrusion in half so I have the the left and the right side holder for the bearing and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this down in my woodworking shop here to get started nothing really is that critical on them so I I got the pieces cut and then I got the uh, slides located and I'm just marking the mounting holes here I'm gonna drill go back and drill some holes later and um, I you know lined everything up with a caliper before I started marking it so they'd be all parallel and stuff and then I wound up having to put numbers on stuff because it turns out the two slides the mounting holes are a little bit different on them so I wanted to make sure I got them back together in the right order so I, I just took my little spring loaded center punch there and these things are really handy to have uh, and they work good when you're trying to, to find the center of a hole that you just marked out I also have transfer punches out in my other shop that are good for transferring whole locations too but this is what I had down here now and got all the holes marked out and then I just went over to drill press and I drilled them in basically these are all a uh, half millimeter oversized so you know there's plenty of clearance and I'm gonna have to go back and line everything up in the at the final assembly anyway so I got them drilled then you have to go back and this aluminum is so soft that it kind of pulls it up and you have to deburr it and now I'm just marking out the uh, holes for the router table I didn't really want to measure them they were kind of tough to measure they're all metric and stuff so I just lined the piece up where I want it and you know mark the center of them from there actually I drilled the holes a little bit oversized because it looks like the table may not be perfectly parallel down the side so I'm gonna have to do some uh, set up with an indicator in the end and I need a little bit of extra room to be able to shift these around so I'm just gonna you know go back and here I am just drilling the holes to mount this bracket up underneath the table kind of added away and there it is it's I'm using the um, these are holes that taps that were M6 threaded holes that were in the base of the tabletop there on the bottom side for mounting a fence anyway and to start out with I'm just uh, getting it parallel with the outside edge but like I said it's a little bit off from side to side from what I can tell so I'm gonna be fiddling with this all later moving in a little bit and for now I'm just using the hardware I got laying around I have to get some better screws later and then the uh, these these linear slide blocks go in there they're a um, 16 millimeter diameter shaft and they have all ball bearings in them and actually they uh, I was surprised they came with really nice shaft wipers and seals and stuff so I think they should work plus they're gonna be down under out of the way where uh, the dust should not get into them and even if some should make it down there there's a wiper on them so so now I had just used some blocks of wood to get that parallel to the top when I tighten the screws because there's some clearance holes and then it was time to go do the other side which is just a uh, mirror image of the, the side that I did before and get everything lined up in there and tighten down then I just kind of had to flip it up to start getting some to more dimensions off of it and this thing is uh, well over 100 pounds now with those rails on it so it 
getting pretty heavy and you can see uh, this is that piece of tubing I have that's extremely straight and flat that I'm going to be using for the fence and there are a couple pieces of um, old channel aluminum that I had laying around I'm getting ready to get some numbers off of here and you can see I'm squaring everything up and you know getting kind of my final measurements to get going with and those two blocks are going to be machined to, to hold the fence and to, um, hold the bearings and make it travel on so I decided to go with a four foot fence and I went down to the shop and this is that old uh, Evolution Rage 3 that I'm going to be using. And this saw has seen a pretty good beating and it still cuts extremely accurate and square. You can see that. Um, it's still on the original blade. The only thing I did is I put it on that DeWalt stand because I had some big pieces of steel that I had to cut some angles in. Um, that little stand that hung off and I needed another holder for him. So I swapped it over to the DeWalt one when I sold the DeWalt saw. So now I got this uh, cut to size, and I got to go back and uh, put a pocket in there for the sawdust removal. This this tube is going to um, have a vacuum hook to one end of it, and the easiest way for me to do it was just throw it on the, the old milling machine here and just mill it out. Um, and I could have cut it out with a drilled a couple holes and cut it out with a jigsaw or something like that, but you know this was basically the easiest method that I had. And, you know, it's really handy to have one of these old bridge ports around. They just, uh, you know, they come in handy and they just run forever. So I just put a, I wanted a big radius on it so I didn't get much stress in it twisting or any twisting or anything when I cut this out. So that's why I got a one inch cutter on there now and I'm just, uh, cut one side, flipped it and I'm just going to go back to just clean up the other side there and get that little block out of it. It's nice to have a couple of rainy hot days to work indoors and uh, you know not be out in the garden or yard working. So this, uh, you know, there it is. I just uh, cleared out that spot, and there will be a seal on the bottom and stuff like that later. But this is you know just the beginning, the roughing out of everything until I see exactly uh, how everything fits together, and I can go back and make some minor modifications if I have to later. And as with anything, you have to go back and deburr it after you cut it out. Now those two pieces of channel iron I had, these are aluminum channel iron I've been, had for years and I uh, was I couldn't really clamp it down good on that evolution saw. The pieces were a little short so I decided to use this uh, saw I got from Northern Hydraulics and I tell you this thing, uh, is, I'm not happy with it at all. It just doesn't cut square. Um, the, the clamp on it actually bent from tightening it and uh, it, the whole saw, the head is wiggly and a couple teeth have come off it. So I try not to use that much anymore, but um, you know I definitely want to get the bigger Evolution one someday to replace that because that one is kind of junk, I think. So now it turned out these pieces of channel were all totally warped, twisted, and uh, not even straight or flat or anything. So I wound up going through and machining every surface on them just to clean them up and bring them down to a, uh, a state that I could use. So. What I thought was going to take, uh, you know, 20 minutes to make the brackets wound up turning into a, a couple hour job by the time I was done getting everything, you know, flat, square, and uh, ready to go on and start putting the holes in it and stuff. And then I just had to cut a couple couple grooves out of the top. Um, there's going to be a fence that goes across the front of this, um, and I'll get into that later, but uh, UPS actually lost it. So... Um, I'm just still waiting for that. So anyhow, you can see I'm just going back and putting some of the taps in for mounting that fence to. And I'm starting with a little uh, pilot drill there. It's just a little 60 degree drill that gives you a really good location when you really need an accurate location for for holes. You drill a little, little indent first with this. And then what you do is you go back with the drill later. And having that little V actually brings the, uh, the tap drill you know into perfect alignment there and it doesn't wander around when it hits the material so that's the easiest way to know you have a good location and it really makes it easy with that DRO on the machine too it allows you to you know just kind of watch what you're cranking in especially um, this is all metric that I'm using because the table is metric so you know I'm just uh, kind of you know using that to make everything easier it could all be done by hand but that's a hard way and then going back and tapping everything and kind of hate tapping aluminum because it's so soft but you have to do it 
And then the same thing, I've got to put some uh, holes in the side for actually mounting the um, mounting this to the bearing block. So I just, uh, I'm not even uh, drilling the center on these. I'm just drilling them a half millimeter oversize and that should be good. And you can see that DRO is really, you know, great for finding your location. And you can switch back and forth from inch to metric. So, so here we are a couple hours later. I've got my brackets done and going back down in the shop. And I've got them mounted on the bearings there. And just kind of got that uh, that uh, fence clamped to it just to get my final numbers and make sure everything is running parallel and, you know, smooth and stuff before I put the final holes into it. And actually, it, uh, you know, it really glides right along and everything's perfect in it. So I took it out there and I... You know, went back and I, I drilled the holes for uh, mounting it, and also had to put a top hole in to get my tool in there that will be covered by other brackets later. Then to get the screws in, it's kind of they're all offset from that hole, so I had to use a ball, ball wrench there. And I started out trying to put a piece of tape on it just to lock the screw in, but that didn't really work so good. It was a little bit stiff and it didn't uh, move around when you went to go on an angle like that with it. So in the end, they wound up putting a little magnet on, magnet on it there, you can see. And that way the screw still floated easy and um, it made it easy to get the, the ones off center in there. So uh, I got 12 screws holding that together and uh, everything moves smoothly. But I, uh, I still can get a little side to side rock. And I'm not sure if I'm going to drive this with one screw on the side or with two lead screws. So I decided to add another little angle bracket on the back there to... To give it a little bit more stiffness so I could um, get away with one screw if that's what I go with. So I just took that evolution saw and just, you know, did a couple cuts on it and drilled a couple holes to put some taps in there. And now I'm going to just mount this on the back here and, you know, for a little bit extra anti twist so you could drive it from one side or the other without it racking. And I put screws in and I realized that I was off by a couple thousandths. I couldn't get it tight up against the fence. So that's where the little rat tail file really comes in handy. And, you know, makes a quick job of uh, moving something, just that little hair that you need. So there it is. Um, I can actually sit on this and ride it back and forth. And it just goes so smoothly. There's absolutely zero shake, twist, and anything else. So um, now I'm ready to go on to the uh, next step here. Um, I did get some more parts. I'm still waiting for some, but I got the uh, the magnetic switch there, and I got a contactor. This is going to have to be 220 volts because the router draws too much power to run it all on one circuit. And got an old stepper motor there, but I'm waiting for some other steppers and some new drivers to come. And I got my Arduino stuff there ready to go, and I'm not sure exactly how complicated I'm going to get with it at the moment because I'm finding out that I'm not really that great with programming and. Uh, I got some LEDs and uh, some leftover of the mounting channels from my kitchen there I'm going to be using. And then I got my two little lead screws here. And these are just basically 3D printer lead screws. Except for um, they were 2 millimeter pitch instead of an 8 millimeter. And they came with brass nuts, but I do have some anti-backlash spring-loaded nuts coming. So that's going to be my next thing is uh, getting them in and... Actually, I'm still waiting for some some other parts. And UPS today lost a uh, very expensive piece of woodpecker's extrusion, four inches wide, that's supposed to go on the front of that fence to uh, to slide in and out, make room for the bit, and finish everything off. So I've spent three hours on the phone today trying to figure out what they're going to do next. But um, guy says it was delivered and it never was. I think he actually stole it because it was such a nice piece of extrusion. So here's where I sit and. Um, I just thought I'd give you a quick update right now and you know hopefully uh, next time it'll be moving under power and then I'll get on to the base cabinet and electronics. I figured I'd share at this point so the videos don't get too long. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.